Welcome to the Lair of the Alchemist. Welcome to Lair of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, a behind the scenes look, a tour of the Lair, otherwise known as my music room. I thought it would be fun today if we uh, just took a few moments to just look around in, in the room where I record all my videos. So we'll start right over here. This is the area that you usually see me at. This is the backdrop here, my extra records up there. You go back, you can see all my records here, all my record shelves starting with A up here, working our way around. Up here I have some posters that I bought. Uh, here's one, Jethro Tull at the Comerford Theater in Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre is the town that I went to high school and college in and where I met my wife and where my wife was originally from. So I thought that was fun to have that poster there. I have my cream poster here. I have right over here, this is a Candlemas poster that was given to me by one of the guys in the band. Very, very cool. It's the Epicus Dumicus Metallicus 25 year celebration. This was also a cover that they used for a 12 inch single that they put out that had a cover of Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper on it. I always thought it was an awesome, uh, artwork there and it looks super cool on the wall. All right, if we move our way around here, this is my workstation. I've got my camera. Normally I've got my microphone set up uh, back there, but we're using the microphone for the video. I have my mixer, which I use when I stream on Twitch or on YouTube. Back here in this corner, sometimes you catch some of these things in the shop. These are my bass guitars. I have my five string precision bass, my four string Getty Lee jazz bass, and my four string American special precision bass. I also have, this is where I hang my wardrobe stuff. Sometimes you see me wearing these various vests and things in the videos. If you move over here, uh, oh, also here, my Bauer and Wilkins speakers, my Def Leppard Pale Ale that my wife and I got on our Monsters of Rock cruise, never been opened. Maybe it'll be worth money someday, who knows? Probably not. My bass gear that I use when I'm practicing, my Ampeg SVT3 Pro, my bag end speaker, my distortion pedal, some other guitar distortion pedal up there. This is my Pioneer SX434 receiver. This is a late 70s, I think like 79 receiver. And over here, my turntable, which is a Fluence RT85. Fluence is a Canadian company and they have various levels. This is with the uh, higher level turntable that they have. It's got an Ortofon 2M blue cartridge on it, an acrylic platter, and it has a belt drive turntable. I have a video coming out very soon for a beginner's guide to buying turntables. The turntable I show in that video is a direct drive. This is a belt drive. The motor is outside here. The little thing that displays whatever records I'm listening to at the moment, Sabotage the Dungeons Are Calling, is what I was spinning last. A cassette player that I bought at a Goodwill for I think like five bucks. I don't have very many cassettes left, so. All right, over here is my upright bass, my double bass. This is a turn of the century Czech bass that I got when I was in college. Uh, had uh, lucked out with this. I bought it from a retired music teacher that minored on double bass in college and he never played the thing. He's like, this has been in my closet for 25 years. I just wanna give it to somebody who's gonna play it. So I got it at a really good price. Here I have some more wardrobe stuff. This vest a friend made for me. This is my death metal 
battle vest. It's got all Florida death metal band patches on it. This guitar I bought uh, before Craigslist, before people advertised things on the internet. It's, it's kind of unique. It's a Gibson Flying V, but it has a different headstock on it. Normal Flying Vs have the triangle headstock. This has all the tuners on one side. It has a Gibson Explorer headstock. This was a very limited edition thing that Gibson did. And I bought it for next to nothing off of a lady who said her used to belong to her boyfriend. They broke up. It been, had been sitting in her closet for ages and she just wanted to get rid of the thing. So I bought it for like, I think $150, which is basically nothing. Here's my first uh, real bass that I had. My first bass was a student model type of bass, but then I got this early 80s precision bass. My Dean acoustic electric guitar that I like to mess around with. Down here is my first turntable. I had a turntable when I was young, back in the 80s. It was like built into a stereo system. Uh, but when I started getting back into vinyl, in the early 2000s. Uh, this was my first turntable on SLD2. I have some extra records down there that I'm looking to get rid of or sell or replace. Here's my record cleaner. It's a nitty gritty. They actually don't, don't make these anymore. You pour this liquid on the record. There's a vacuum uh, thing here that you just spin the record around and then it uh, cleans the record. My PA system uh, for when I have people over the house and we're jamming. And down here I have a Sun Model T tube amp head. This is kind of a rare thing that is hard to find. Doom metal and stoner metal guys like this head. I, I bought this again for a steal way back before people Craigslist and all that. A guy had it, uh, just wanted to get rid of it. He had it in his garage and I bought it for like, I think $200. An electronic drum set that my kids mess around on and when I have friends over we, we jam on that. I don't know if you've got in the picture, I have all my record, have a bunch of record covers up here at the top. These were records that I wanted to either upgrade or I had doubles of and they were, they were all actually ones I wanted to upgrade. So the vinyl on them was all beat up. I thought I'll probably get next to nothing. I couldn't sell them. If I traded them in, I'd get next to nothing. So I thought, what the heck, I'll line them up there. I think it looks cool. Over here, we have a special spot for uh, one of my favorite guitar players, Randy Rhodes. My lava lamp, my Ampeg SVT2 Pro head. This thing weighs an absolute ton. I don't use it anymore because I can't really move it my Ampeg 410 bass cabinet, and my Flyers flag. You've probably heard me talk. I'm originally from Northeastern Pennsylvania, and the Flyers are my team, so I've got to represent. And over here, of course, you've heard me talk many times, my favorite guitar player, Richie Blackmore. So here's my Richie Blackmore uh, poster on the back of the wall. We've got a nice piano here that I like to practice on, play around on every now and then. Now up here we've got some posters, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, and my bookshelf, which are all my metal books. Lots of Martin Popoff books here, it's a little hard to see. And then we're, we're back to the vinyl, some of my box sets I have in there. Here's where I keep all my wristbands and different jewelry things that I swap in and out for the various videos. So there you go. A tour, a behind the scenes tour of the layer. All right, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Is this what you thought it looked like when you see my videos? What about you guys? Do you have your own music room? Do you, I know I have a lot of musicians out there. Do you have a, your own space for all your instruments and stuff like that? Where do you guys listen to your music? Let me know in the comments down below. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.